everybody good evening good afternoon and good day wherever you're joining us from you're welcome to your number one show the niger we want joining me tonight is our intercontinental moderator mr wiley light you're welcome to the show uh, dr vicky is good to be back on our number one show the nigeria we want welcome how's your week been yeah um, I haven't won Task Lotto yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been playing? Because there's no point wishing or hoping yeah, to win just... when you're not playing. <laughs> I, occasionally play, I occasionally play when there is $30 million to be won, those special okay. ones. Mm -hmm. I put in some $20 or whatever, but yeah, so I've not been lucky, so I'm still keeping to my, to my day job. <laughs> <laughs> that's so it, that's it. Mm. yeah so my my routine hasn't changed still the same you know working and mm. trying to keep healthy and uh trying to support the kids and the family yeah so so just you know just trying to just busy and you know uh, make the, the the most of the you know of the exactly. time and the opportunities available mm. Mm. And that's all we can do, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So right. What have you been? What have you been up to? Uh, um, busy as yeah. well. Life has been excessively busy. Um, few projects running simultaneously, and um, still traveling in between. Just got back from Bainstill last okay. night. So yeah, that's busy and. Um, so trying to juggle from one house to another, um, house in Benzil and then the one here in Melbourne, and trying to keep everybody calm and cool and happy. So that that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you. I'm sure you have what it takes to, you know, multifaceted and multi, uh, you know, dimensional. You know aspects of you. Uh, I have no doubt. Trying, 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 to, trying to push it, new, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems um, Mr. Evis isn't able to make it. We wish him. Um, we pray he gets better quickly. Quickly. Um, he hasn't been feeling well, and um, we're still expecting our dear Egmo. So if our producer. Um, us if you can send a reminder to Mr. Yemi Shodim that we are already on, uh, that would be great. So while we're waiting for Mr. Shodim, I think we should just get into what is trending. So there are stuff happening in Nigeria that is kind of um, making everyone to stop and and um, check, uh, is, this, is this for real? The one of those uh, incidences uh, is um, not incidences, but some of those uh, good things happening is the bill, education uh, bill that our president just signed. Uh, what what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think uh, it is uh, an important element. It is an you know at least. It, the provision of the legal framework it is very important to any policy and i think you know uh passing the bill or signing that bill uh it is a significant step in having that policy uh, i'm sure you know many of us have benefited from such you know student loans in know, the past in, yeah. uh, in the past in, in mm. australia and I'm mm -hmm. sure many Nigerians also in other part of developed world at one time or the other must have benefited from such law. So I think it, it is a good thing um, that is people have the opportunity uh, to be able to finance their in their studies without breaking the bank. And mm -hmm. also, you know, uh, people from uh, uh, underprivileged, you know, family there are very brilliant ones that have not uh, been able to exactly and, and that's what i love about about that bill um there's a cap 
if your parents are, or you or your parents, if you're earning less than 500,000 uh, Naira or a norm, then you are able to tap into that. But if they're hurting more, then there's no way. So, you know, in the past, these things, things like this, uh, that were meant to be for underprivileged. Unfortunately, we we see that most of the rich ones, they are always trying to grab, grab, grab because they don't want the underprivileged to rise. So the fact that they're signing this into, into a bill, or hopefully um, those that really need it will be able to use it and, and rise up. Because, um, okay. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think in terms of the contents, uh, the policy itself needs to be well fleshed out. You know, the details, like we know in bills, you don't have the details. It's only that it provides a legal framework for that mm -hmm. thing to happen. But in terms of the policy itself, I think they need to consider. I understand the angle of, you know, uh, having that a uh, kind of uh, benchmarking of, you know, 500,000 Naira. But if you really want to look at it in Nigeria of today, how much is real 500,000? You know, uh, you know. To be honest, it's not. It's not. It's, it's. It's not a big money, even for people that are civil servants just trying to survive with their kids. And I don't think it's a lot of money. But I agree with you. It is an oh, important deal. But it when is, you look at when you look at those earning hundred k, wife is earning fifty k, and they are sending their children to uni, they are sending their kids to school. You can't compare with. Uh, with uh, a director somewhere earning eight hundred thousand, the yeah, wife absolutely. earning five hundred thousand. So, uh, I think all in all, yes, it still needs to be fleshed out, but it's a it's a thinking in the right direction. Hopefully, by the time they flesh it out and they add more to it, it's gonna present better. And um, and my prayer is those actually need it, they're able to, to tap into it and use it. Because if not for what Awolowo did, I don't think my husband would have been able to be who he is today. You know what I mean? So opportunities like this, uh, when we have leaders that is thinking about, about how to make things better, it, it just it makes my heart sing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's starting on the right on the right track. Um, we just need to be vigilant and be able to provide, you know, views and to be able to, you know, support them and to be able to encourage where necessary and, mm -hmm. uh, and to, to when criticize. We need we need to criticize we we, we shall yeah, so, the so that uh they won't get carried away they'll be able to exactly. focus on. but i think the one of the most important aspects of any government or good governance is to to show creatively and mm -hmm. proactively that they can think and they can come up with ideas exactly. uh, policies and i think so far we've seen that and i think Another major thing for me in terms of what it what is trending that you know is just the uh, what has come out in regards mm. to the CBN governor uh, following his the, you know the past well the past CBN governor uh, following his arrest and all most of these revelations coming out they quite quite shocking revelations um, we know law and we know that there is presumption of innocence and we by you know every means giving him the opportunity of presumption of innocence but the amounts you know money being mentioned they are staggering you know, the amounts being mentioned is one cbn governor being an md to a bank is another <laughs> uh, uh that that was just like only in nigeria will something like this happen and he's been getting away with it. No wonder they found how many cars did they found? New, brand new cars. In his I company. saw the, I saw the video. It, it looks like, um, it looks like a manufacturing, a car manufacturing plant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Honestly, it's it's, um, it's, yeah, insane. it's it's insane. It's insane. Mm. It's insane. And the fact, the fact that he's so 
he has so much courage that nothing will happen to him because some would have like okay i've tried everything that i could not to allow not to get this guy there he's there he's gonna he's gonna chase me but he just he fell yeah nothing can happen to him um, yes, um i think in a way part of what what i read during the week was the fact that he he came out with his, his scheme as part of the fraud whereby who is who the cabaz so allegedly he employed their family their kids and he created these offices you know positions for them within the cbn and they gave them all there i did that purposely just to keep their mouth shut uh it was created for them and just looking after all you know the cabals and making everyone happy and i think it got it got so much and i think to me it's, it's more about the reflection on Buhari himself, the reflection of a president that came into How office. How could they have gotten away with this? I mean, how many years? How could he have done something like this under your watch? And you're a leader. You're a leader. This? Yeah. It's so... Yeah, and it, it, it was one of those things I saw, one of the red flags that I saw, you know, very early in his government that I just, you know, I made a U-turn. I think we've we've spoken about it many times on this program. Mm. That, you know, like myself, I was part of the people that really supported Even him. Me. Even I just me, said, I know, in 2015. <laughs> but when it took him six months to come up with his cabinet, mm. and then he was just making a lot of, you know... Uh, blunders, lopsided, after blunders. Lopsided I mean, appointments and all mm. that. And I knew... Person for a whole eight years, and this guy can lie. Hey, yeah. he can lie, yeah. even yeah. <laughs> and you know, and it just this guy just doesn't care, you know. So it, it says a lot about him. And what are your thoughts about the EFCC guy that is now? Um, <laughs> hmm. it's, 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 it is it is the same thing, I think it's just the same thing, it's just is it's the nigerian thing people who just want to live far 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 beyond their means uh i think you know again allegations of him going to lesser hide with his wives and staying in one of the best hotels paying thousands of dollars you know on that trip and obviously it's extravagant life i i think honestly as a country no matter what we try to do in trying in good governance there must be a very strong uh, national orientation that no, not everyone is going to be rich. I think it's exactly. just, it, it just, it's just like would, people yeah. will be comfortable. Yeah, mm. you know, I'm, I'm saying that based on experience mm. of people like myself, you say, I'm living outside Nigeria, mm. that not everyone is going to be rich. Not everyone is going to be super rich. But at least you do your bits government will provide necessary support, at least to make sure that people that can easily fall through the cracks, people government will be able There's to support. There's a safety them. net. There's a safety net. The so central that we to... have here is a safety net for many, safety many net. people. Yeah. If not, so, there'll be lots of people sleeping on the street. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I, I think we just need to, because I just try to make sense of it, people stealing billions of billions of naira in dollars and putting them away and you know i just and don't you, know why and you, you just don't have conscience you go to bed to sleep and you just don't think how your next door neighbor or people down the street how they are faring kids on the streets begging they're supposed to be in school you're not no conscience it's like yeah. their conscience is all dead they, they they've got nothing in there they're just empty shells because if you have conscience how can you you know yeah. money meant for the masses just yeah. mm, no thinking no no planning no nothing me 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 and uh you look at you look at Buari, uh, not Buari, Babangida with her the, where is he today in the wheelchair there's no way you know at the end of it all you become X, X leader, X this, X that, uh, and all that money will not stop the, uh, you know, the, the brain 
leaving you and, uh, uh, you know, dementia setting in. It will stop medical issues coming on, you know. It's just so sad. It's, it's so sad. Let's just hope that this guy continues to work for the people. Let's pray that they won't stop him. Um, those cabals, faceless cabals. Let's pray. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah, that's you know we 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 pray for him and we wish him all the all, all the very best. And obviously, mm. the tax ahead is is going to be tough. It's huge. You know, it's uh, massive. It's, it's tough. It's, 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 it's huge. Yeah. And the mm. um the the destroyers of Nigeria they won't go you know they won't go easy. They won't. They would. Mm. They will definitely stage a big fight. You know, you know, fight back and. They but won't want to got fight back. Today, definitely. But we've got a politician mm. of many years and he was prepared for this. It wasn't an accidental kind of not an accidental. It was a it was he it was a huge fight for him to actually get there. But one yeah. thing that I love about all this is the fact that he never said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna because if they had known that he would do this, <laughs> it wouldn't mm. have been possible. So the fact that it was just and yes, people say whatever, you know. <coughs> he refused to answer anybody, just focus on the job at hand. And that's something that I like, being focused. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, Not getting distracted by, you know, uh, anytime. <laughs> no, that's something that I, I like about this. And I just pray that God will helping to do the right thing by us by nigerians um and i'm just uh, you know just for us to close this part up yep there's a part in the bible that says uh we should pray for for the land you know all that prays for it you know we will do well yeah, please um, pray because you, you are now in, you know you are also mama Gio now <laughs> So I, I I need to remind myself that that you are now Mama Gio. So maybe um, from from time to time we'll be asking Mama Gio, uh, <laughs> Doctor Vicky Mama Gio, to give us prayers towards the end of the program because there are a lot of prayers. Uh, we need we, we need prayers in Nigeria, and um, you know uh, whether you voted for for uh, for Tinubu or you didn't, and you live in Nigeria or you live outside. The fact is, Nigeria is still home. If Nigeria works, it works for us all. So we're able to go back freely. I'm able to go to Elisha, you know. You're able to go to uh, Ogun State and, and, you know, do your thing and not be afraid of being kidnapped or whatever if it works out well. But for it to work out well, we need to be able to pray and not be saying all this negative stuff. Because whatever... Even, you know, whatever is not working out, if you keep verbalizing negative, it's that negative that is going to happen. But even though it's not working out right now, whatever you want, if you keep saying it, that's what you will attract. It's very important that we spend a few minutes a day to pray for our country, pray for the leader, pray for God, God to, to help him and to direct him so that he can do the right thing by us. So that's just what I want us to I want to I want to touch on before we move on to today's topic, which I will just pass this on to you. I'm not sure if everyone's still trying to yeah, join us. I think he said he was in transit somewhere mm. and he you know he mentioned that there could be uh, some yeah. network issues. So right. so let's okay. see. Um let's so if started. If you just join us, you are on our number one show, the Nigeria We Want. On the show today, we'll be discussing issues about bad governance in Nigeria, specifically, you know, with the just immediate past administration, uh, with a specific topic, citizens groups call for probe dissolution of fraudulent Nigeria here project. Um, so, courtesy of our producer, Mr. Labi, I quickly uh, provide uh, a brief background to that topic. And then, before we go into uh, 
discussion proper. It's looking like it's going to be uh, between me and Dr. Vicky tonight, but never mind. We are we are we are prepared. We're capable. <laughs> we we capable. We try our best. So what appears to be a fraud of monumental proportion was foisted on Nigerians at the end of the administration of former President Muhammad Dubuari. <clears throat> After eight years of promising to give Nigeria a new national career, the immediate past government could only unveil the name as well as the logo at the Fambara International Air Show in London in July 2018. Years after the promised Nigeria Air Project by the immediate past Minister of, of Aviation at the Sirica ended in disaster and monumental fraud when a hired plane from the Ethiopian Airlines was brought into the country on the 26th of May, 2023 for the unveiling. After gulping about 85 billion Naira, the project is shrouded in controversy, prompting the House of Representatives Committee on Aviation to allege fraud in the unveiling of the Nigeria here and demand prosecution of Syrica and all those associated with the controversial unveiling of the airline. The minister replied by accusing the former chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Aviation, Unanim Unaji, of demanding 5% shares of the national carrier from him. While the CEO of Airpeace, Alain Oyema, called on President Tinumbu to immediately dissolve and probe the charade called Nigeria here. Other groups asked anti graft agencies to arrest Sirica over the sham he hurriedly unveiled on the last official day of the Buhari administration. However, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has invited Sirica for questioning about the Nigeria Hair Project. The SY minister is due to appear before the commission within the week to answer questions related to the launch of the national carrier and the alleged 3 billion Naira spent on the airline project. So we'll be asking on the show tonight, what is the fate of the Nigeria Air project in the face of this uh, controversy? Uh, thank you again. Uh, that's uh, <clears throat> I saw a, a comprehensive uh, background by our producer, Mr. Labi. So I go to Dr. Vicky now. So, what is the fate of the national carrier Nigeria here in the face of this controversy? Hmm. <clears throat> um, the thing is, we want to have national carrier. Um, it's 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 a beautiful thing to to do have, but. The way they are going about it, it's just it's just an avenue for them to eat money. It's just an avenue for um, you know it's let's let's just hope that this time around we we'll get it right. The thing is, there are many countries that do they don't really own, uh, you know, like the country itself owning a national career, uh, car, um, uh, uh, hairline uh, that I can't remember. I'm trying to remember my brain. Please remind me. There's a particular, particular country that, yes, they have a, a national hairline, but it's owned by another country. And yes, it's all open. We all can read about it. It's all there. There's nothing wrong about it we talked about we talked before when you live larger than who you are that's when you you try and find you know just make yourself to be bigger than what you are and that's what is happening all these years we didn't really have any now by fire by force before body uh, left they wanted to just show us something and they sold us a lie so what is the faith? What is our faith? It's still possible, but under the guardianship, under the leadership of somebody 
that has eyes that can see, that can watch, and that can make sure that we actually get the right thing this time around, not the lies, not the fake. How can you go to another country and borrow Aya, all documented, and you spent billions, not be one thousand. How much mm -hmm. it be back by just give me one million, I will do a better job. You know, just rub something off and quickly put and then rub it off again, give it back to the owner. It's it's terrible. How can you do this? Under Buari's leadership. Under Buari's leadership. How can somebody do this? So, what is the fate? I believe we, we thank God that um um we have a new leader and i'm hoping that under his leadership we can get it right and you know what even if we as in as a country if we don't have uh one owned by the country itself we can have we can have um you know members of the public that you know earpiece is there earpiece has been doing the job that the country was supposed to be doing why not have him as a national carrier, uh, national hairline, Nigerian hairline kind of thing? You know, talk to him, give him, let him have, you know, most of the, the, the shares in there. Why not? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vega. I think in a way the whole thing is, is so embarrassing because totally. you remember towards the end of uh, Jonathan's government, you know, the president and the APC at the time, you know, they were talking a lot about so many um, debts within the presidential fleet. Yes, they yes, I'm talking about that. And I think it was that part of that rhetoric at the time that they promised to convert many of those aircraft within the presidential fleet to turn them to national carrier. That was the time they first, you know, mentioned the idea of, you know, relaunching a national career and everything, and many people bought into that. So it's in, yes. it's in opposition, yes. it was easier said than done. Mm. And then three years later, you know, the, the government came in in 2015, and three years later, they remember one of their election promises. promises. That they was promise. just before the 2019 election, and then they came up with this jamboree, and then. You know, by unveiling the logo, <laughs> just unveiling the logo, and we know and, how much how much millions they spent yeah, so on if, designing the logo. The logo, and that was done far away. That was done far away in uh in Fambara, you know, at uh, a show, you know, um, in United Kingdom, um, and then. And that was the last we, you know, despite having all people working, MD and everything, nothing was done. So the whole thing is just, it's, it's a big embarrassment and it's, it's even a disgrace, you know, if you, to an average Nigeria, the way we carry ourselves, you know, the pride and just, you know, the way we, 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 we project ourselves outside the country, it is an embarrassment to, to think that uh, we don't have a national career. And to even make it more embarrassing, like you have to go to Ethiopia with all due respect to, mm. uh, to, to your, you know, to the to the good people of Ethiopia. So you gotta go there to borrow <laughs> a plane borrow. from it to Ethiopia airline. Mm. You know, Ethiopia, Ethiopia as a country has gone through a lot, and they are um, still going through a lot. And they are still going through a lot. They are still they going through a lot. I was I was in Ethiopia. For the first time in my life, in January this year, I flew their, their plane from Israel to Nigeria, stopped over in, in Ethiopia. My dear brother, honestly, you use your hand and cover your face like this, thinking of Nigerian airport, comparing it with Ethiopian airline. Yeah, yeah. Ethiopian, you know, uh, Ethiopian uh, airport. Airport. airport my goodness it, you can't even compare it does, even with our new one back you can't compare come and see fleets of planes like this i'm just like ethiopia ah, ah, hey god help me ethiopia I could, honestly for those hours that i was there i mean i was in their in their lounge you know their their, their um 
business land. I could honestly, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And it's so shameful. And it's so shameful for Nigerians for us not to even use our hand to cover our face. I mean, now you now go, but you now go there and say, please so borrow us one, just one out of all this that you have, just one. We want to go and show off to our people. It's so shameful. Totally yeah. shameful. And yeah. those people shouldn't even go scot free. The people in charge, the director, the whomever they are, they need to come and explain to us. Don't just explain. Whatever they hold should be seized from them. Those money, those billions should be should be seized from them. They shouldn't go scot free. How, how can you do this? Thank you, Dr. Vicky. If you just join us, you are in the right place at the right time. The Niger we want. We're discussing the charade, you know, over the yeah, Nigeria here, the last charade of Buhari's uh, presidency. So we want to hear from you. Send, send, send us your views, opinions about what you think should happen to the perpetrators of that uh, national disgrace, because it is a disgrace uh, of it all. Of, of 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 significant magnitude. Mm -hmm. um, I will go to Dr. Vicky now. Is is Wally and Vicky show tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and we are doing well. We are doing yeah, well. So our uh, yeah, Mr. Ayobosi Washiko is unavoidably absent, and our uh, big Egbo, Mr. Yemisho Demo, is also is unable to join us. So I will go to Dr. Vicky again. Uh, so. Talking about you know um, consequences or lack of it in Nigeria, it has been uh, a, one of the major issues we have as a country. People do a lot of bad, bad things, and they just get away with it. So I provide a context here. The Ethiopia Airlines chairman Gemma Wake has resigned over the Nigeria air controversy, Whoa. but no air that. has rolled in Nigeria. Exactly. So why the play game between the minister and lawmaker rather than taking responsibility? So two things there. Do we have the culture of taking responsibility as a people, as a nation? And number two, in terms of, you know, ads rolling, should we just be waiting and talking as we normally do? Or government, you know, President uh, Tinumbu should be very decisive and, you know, make the next moves. Definitely, Tinumbu should do it differently. For many, many years, people have been, no, not people, people in government. Ordinary people, yes, if they steal phone, they, they you know, somebody catch them, then they get into trouble, right? Um, but if you're in the government, that nothing happens. The worst thing that will happen is they put uh, something onto their neck, slump, in the court, and that will be the end of it. It shouldn't be business as usual for them anymore. We are begging Tinumbu to do it differently. This time around, especially on this case, it should be done differently. Those people, like I said before, the director, the minister of aviation, all of the people, all the people that were there when they did this launching, should be put together. If we can, don't let me say this on on here. But they should be queried, they should be questioned, they should be charged to court. It shouldn't be business as usual. If the president of United States, who was caught doing wrong things, could be charged to court, who are these people? What kind of power do they have over 220 million? I'm not even sure how many million we are now. <laughs> what kind of power? They are, they've done the wrong thing by us. They shouldn't just go scot-free and um, nothing happens. It should change from now on. We we uh, Tinumbu on uh, at the at the helm of their affairs, things should change. It should change. You've done the wrong thing. We've given you money to do this do it or else this will happen there should be consequences there should be consequences ethiopian the the the, the director over there in ethiopia who signed something 
he had to resign because they had, there's a law. And when there's a law, if we do this, this is going to happen. And that's what, but that, we don't have anything like that in Nigeria. That should change because that's why they kept doing this and they kept getting away with it because there are no consequences. There Thank you, no doctor. Consequences. Thank you, doctor. They can just to buttress your point. I, I, I don't really see it solely as legal issue. I think it's more around people not just taking responsibility. I think it's just a culture. There's that culture of, there's, there's arrogance, no, without a doubt, there's arrogance. Totally. And that's and that, that sense of entitlement that people just, they just think they can get away with, with, with anything. Even the most ridiculous things, they just think they, they, you know, they can easily get away with it. And I think in the way, if the direction of the country wants to move forward, there is always a battle between the elites and the political class. Exactly. And I think that's what we are witnessing here. So there's one part of me based on what I know about politics and you know and those behind the scene arrangements. President Tinumbu, as we have been today with all his action, still very, very early days. So we have to emphasize that. Mm. It would have been a different person if he had the support of the Kaba, if the mm -hmm. Kaba supported his ambition, if the Kaba supported him to be the APC, uh, you know, sole candidate at the primaries and everything, mm. he would mm. have been in their pockets. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't be able to do all this things that he's doing. He would have been, he would have been, you know, literally be, be in their pockets. He won't be able to get to power and they start to shake that doing everything is doing now. But I think the way I look at it in a more, in my own personal reflections is just because they didn't support him, because everyone gave him root finger, even those that they already benefited from him so many times. They all deserted him at his time of his needs. And now by defying intervention or, you know, is the president's now. And it's not owing any 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 of them anybody any anything anything. <laughs> so I think in a way, in a way, it's just out there. You know, I think when you have money, we've spoken about uh, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We've spoken Definitely. about that so many times there. So it's not thinking about money. It's not thinking about everything. I just it's just about self actualization for him. Mm. He just want to put his name is you know in that in history in history mm. as the mm. man. You know, uh, you need the so right thing just, for the people. You know, you know, the right thing. And just my own reflection that he would have been a, a different president if he had all the support of these people. But because they didn't support him, now he's there. He has to do what he has to do, just to prove a point. Um, so moving forward, you, you, you made reference to EFCC before. The last, my next question is around the EFCC. So, you know. It cracked me up a little bit because we know what has just happened to EFCC and we know even EFCC and all the corruption around, you know, their corridor. Uh, but the EFCC has invited the former aviation minister at the Syrica uh, for questioning. What more should be done at this stage? So should we really expect anything from EFCC? considering their own integrity issues uh, in recent times, and even to consider that even the EFCC chairman was suspended. Uh, and as we speak, I think uh, he's in Kujie prison. Uh, should we expect anything from EFCC in terms of the investigation of this uh, aviation disaster? Mm. I will probably EFCC shouldn't be based on their their track record they should they probably i would say uh, i'm not in, i'm not I'm, I, I really don't know much about politics per se but if i if if i want if i'm in a position to advise tinumbu I would say that another harm, you know, group of people should be elected to investigate things like this. 
not just investigate, to take it to the end. So when they do their investigation and whatever, they make their recommendations to the court. These people shouldn't just go scot free. EFCC, they have their image is tarnished. They they've been they they they've been doing wrong things by the people. So maybe it's time to close them down and start something new and do it better. Well, the you of integrity. Yeah. With track yeah. records. Absolutely. And just, you know, buttressing your point, here in Victoria, they have, well, we have anti, anti corruption, corruption kind of tribunal that specifically, mm -hmm. you know, completely independent from a government and set up to investigate corruption in government. So yeah. they investigate all arms of government and major mm -hmm. government corruption. They look into it. In terms of composition, by nature of what they do, they have. Uh, maybe they have lawyers, obviously, they mm -hmm. have retired, you know, judges, judges. Mm -hmm. um, and they have obviously people from law enforcement background, people from forensic accounting background. They have all of them, the, the, the experts that they know the intricacies of corruption and everything, they have mm. them there and they serve as independent, uh, you know, anti corruption body. I think. I think the government just done we try to do it. The government should have the rethink. What they've done over the years is EFCC as a body, they have police, the the, the head of EFCC. Yeah. They've been more like police. Again, no disrespect to police. They are good, you know, men and women mm -hmm. in the UN police uniform. But historically, um it it is not it is a tainted institution. Definitely, it mm. is a tainted institution, and it is difficult to continue to get uh, the aid of economic and financial commission from that body, the body that is now or uh, name is synonymous with corruption with bribes. Remember the one previously, where is he still in yeah. QJ prison? Yeah, man, and then this, yeah. this one uh, again. What is that saying about that, it's, that it's, commission? Yeah. They, yeah. They're not fit, they're not right to yeah. be in that position. So yeah, probably it's time to just shut that down and then start something new, afresh, and then strategically get the right people. And how do you know the right people? People with track record, known for integrity, that would do this job. Because if, you know, when you have a group like that, they have to be the ones that you know who do that job, even if it's the president that is found to uh, have dirty laundry. They need to be able to face him and tell him off and do what they have to do by the law. Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So for, you know, uh, move, moving on, uh, many groups have called for probe into the project. I mean, to the Nigerian Year project, if we can mm -hmm. even call that project, because it's just from the beginning till it's end. It's fraudulent the project. Yeah, from the concepts to, you know, implementation is all fraud. You can see it from every angle. So people have called for the uh, the probe into the project and its dissolution. Maybe I'm just asking a rhetorical question there based on what you've said, but I was just asking anyway. Do you think that's the best? Way to go, Dr. Vicky. Definitely, he said that that was the, the solution of uh, the project or the solution of uh, of what the solution as in the, the, the project itself, the Nigerian Year project. Even though if there is any, is plan, it still existing? Moment, is it still existing? It should yeah, they, still have, they still have people there. They still have MD. They still have people. You know, all those people, people should be probed. All of them should be arrested. <laughs> Why, still, why are they still there? They all should be arrested. Women, oh, they shouldn't just be, what, what project? There's nothing there. All we have is a logo. All that we have is a logo. And how much have we spent so far? We're talking about billions of Naira. 
on a logo. That, that's all we can say. So, okay, this is what yeah, we yeah. have. That logo, I will design something better for them on Canva within five minutes. Better logo on Canva. Just give me five minutes. So that is that logo that we are looking at right now is all that they have for billions and billions and billions of naira. And they, they are telling me they have a they have a project, and they are telling me that some people are getting salary every month for doing what come on the solution that should have been that should have been done weeks ago they shouldn't even be talking about the solution because there's nothing what are they what are they coming together for what are they working on how to beautify the proof the, the the logo how to put the color well or what we don't even have a hairline to put the logo on so what is wrong? There's no project. I'll be my, I'll be my brother. There's no project. <laughs> There's it's, no project. The, it's all the, nice. The project is more about just design the logo. And that was don't done design the logo. Nigerians, we've given you logo. Take logo. Take logo. And we all fly on logo, Abby. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it, the, the sad thing about this is thinking that Nigerians, they don't have brain that we can't think, that we can't see. And do I blame them? People that are supposed to be talking about things like this, they're talking about, they're cursing and abusing one another. They are chasing Guinness Book of Record. Then people are, millions of people, big, 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 back, 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 on Guinness Books of Record. This is this important thing. They, they, it's none of their business. They, they can't be bothered. Let's leave it to Wale and uh, Vicky to be talking. Abby, it's, it's, it, this is, it's quite shameful. Honestly, it's shameful. It's shameful. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, look, I think we try to look at like we've done in the last two episodes, just to look at um in terms of legacy you know of buari's uh administration a, a, a government that came to power on the campaign of doing things right uh, a a government that came to power uh on the promises of integrity and discipline you know i know it's too early to start to i guess make um a holistic assessment or of his you know administration but if what we've seen in the last week or two about all these you know our allegations of fraudulent you know monumental frauds in so many areas then literally he fell asleep on the wheel he, he you know he just he just so he just fell asleep and, and slept off for, for, a, for a very long time for a very, 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 very. So what should the new government do? I know we've spoken about it, but just as we try to, you know, to, uh, to round up, what should be the focus of a new government? And also uh, Nigerians. One thing I've observed as a keen observer of social media is that most of our national issues are still divided along ethnic lines. You know, you can you can have a look on Facebook now. You can have a look about who is talking about the um, Emifile, the S uh, CBN governor, and all this corruption and all the allegations and everything. You can open Facebook. You can see people that are really talking about. It. You can see which ethnic group is talking about it. You can see which ethnic group is so oblivious to whatever the issues are mm -hmm. because it is their tribe's person. And that is the way, that is the lens, either we like it or not, that is the lens through which we look at things in Nigeria. Most people look at things from the lens of their ethnic groups. But I think as a nation, if you really want to move forward, we need to change that. If regardless of that person, ethnic groups or religion, if someone has done mm -hmm. the wrong thing as a nation, even though there are allegations, but some allegations, if you begin to see the videos, you see this, sometimes you don't Evidence. need to you yeah, don't need to, mm. to really go to court. You're just going to court just to really put icing on the cake. Mm. But you can see a segment of that society completely, you know, uh, silent on that because for them, 
it is a taboo to come out and attack, you know, or say something bad about their tribes person. And I'm just making this very general comment. Yeah. It's an observation that I've seen across different tribes in Nigeria. Everyone tends to look up, be his brother keeper or be his sister keeper. But we think we need to change that orientation definitely as definitely. a nation if you want to mm -hmm. move forward so mm -hmm. that if someone is not the wrong thing he or she knows there's no hiding place he knows that he's going to copy it left right mm -hmm. and center that could in a way change this craziness of just stealing our commonwealth mm -hmm. you know because they know there's no place to hide so i'll right. go back to you now dr vicky mm -hmm. before i take over just talking to myself uh what is the way forward for the new administration in terms of setting agenda for the new government on these issues around you know, corruption and economic recovery? Um, we've said this before. Um, I like his style, his style of not, you know, not attending to all the noises, you know, the this noise, that noise, blah, blah, blah. it's just focused on the job at hand because the job at hand is so massive so there's no time to be you know and in is uh, the people that he had already appointed we can see that is not just my people my people my people whether you're from the north or from the east or from the west where all you are all my people so it's trying to balance that which is good. It's not saying because you're from my side, I'm going to, I mean, everybody in my team, they're going to be from my side, which is a good thing. And, you know, it, this uh, division, it, it's just unfortunate. It had always been the case in Nigeria. But majority of us, we didn't really notice, and it's never been this loud. It's never been this loud. It's so loud this time around. And yes, it will take a while for it to die down. And for people, when when majority, I mean, I've, I've read a few uh, comments here and there of those that were terribly, I mean, seriously against Chinubu. But as soon as he started making these moves, they were like, mm, wow. Wow, he's doing something that nobody had ever done. And I read such comments and I'm like, mm, these are people that were dead set against him. Doing a bit of turn around. Okay, turn let's around. still wait. Let's still see you. What's going on here? Yes, people that are against him, people that felt um, their own person should have been there, you know, and... They have people that they follow, their influencer, you know, they, that's whatever comes out of their mouths is from, it's whatever they hear from their influencers. You can't change such people's mind. But <laughs> my my advice to Tinubu is for him to just be focused and to keep doing his best for Nigeria. He can't solve all the problems. He can't. He just can't. But doing his best includes making sure the round peg in the round hole, the square peg in the square hole. That is him doing the right thing. Put the right people there. He can't touch everywhere. But when he has the right people and is delegating and is double checking, things will start working out well. The other thing is, in terms of corruption, Nigerians were so used to, there's nothing we can do, they are the whatever. That narrative has to change. We put them there. They are supposed to be answering to us, not the other way around. So we empower them. And now they are using our own money to fight us and to make us to do nothing that has to stop the i think it's important for people to understand that these people in the government they are not there just to go and collect money and disappear they are there to work for us they are doing what 
what is supposed to be for us, not for them, for their family. So if we understand this thing, then it's easier for us to start asking questions. What did you do with those billions of dollars that was given to you to do this project? We don't have a project. We don't have our money. What is going on? When people start saying, ask him, we want our money back. Okay, we don't want you to handle the projects anymore. Give us the money back. People asking the question. There should be that law in place that when you're asked to do something, and if you don't do it, what are we to do with you? What are we to do with you? So it's all there, even in the contract. You have a job to do. You don't do your job. This is what is going to happen, number one, number two, number three. We had it there, and we follow through. We follow through. It's not just having it in the document, but following through. By the time there are two, three, four people that you follow through with, others will sit up. You know, I have to sit up and do what I'm here for. It cannot be business as usual any longer. Things have to change. Things must change. Thank you very much, Dr. Vicky, for that uh, you know powerful you know uh, summation and setting agenda uh, for the uh, new uh, president uh, Tinumbu and his uh, and his government. So essentially, there's a need and a renewed focus for the government to do the right thing. And it is in the best interest for the government to do that for our people. Our people have suffered enough mm. on that government since the return to democracy in 1999. Yep. Mm. And we hope that the you know the people they have the power. And this government should be the most humble government because in the history of this country, I can't think of anyone since the return to democracy in 1999 that is leading this country with that level of majority of the voters were actually against him. So if you, the combined votes of Obi and you know, Atiku, the combined cool. votes, you know, is far, 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 you know, uh, greater. Higher than, exactly. greater than Tenumbo. So that, 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 should be, that should be humbling enough to him as a person, uh, to him as, a, as the president, to know that majority of the people within that electoral democracy, they voted against him. They didn't want him as a president. And we all know when you feel rejected internally, how that could be a driver for you to mm. do well. So let's I, will, I will prove you wrong. I'll prove you I will wrong. Prove you wrong. So let this be the driver for him that look, majority of his own people, they rejected him at that election is one, mm. not taking not, not take anything away from people that have their cases within the courts, the courts will do what they have to do. But at least for now, as a president, but I think he should be humble enough to know that majority, they didn't vote for him as a president, and he should prove a point to them. So that in four years' time, well, four years is still far away, he won't need to, to, to talk. His achievement will be there to- we'll talk you know, for to, him, to exactly. Talk for him. To talk mm. So on that note, I'll just hand over to Dr. Vicky just to, I can't go over the time to now, otherwise our editor will be, <laughs> I can't, and I have no excuses to go over the time. So no, we've actually to... done well. We've, we've done well, only two of us. Egma has been trying, he said the network isn't allowing him. So, but for the two of us, for all that we've uh, managed to do, we've actually done really, really well. And, um, I believe somebody somewhere is watching this and is listening and there's a, I, I know our voice may be little and far away from um, Nigeria or we're making a little tiny little bit of impact, even these conversations. And um, I believe so because things, some few things had happened that made me know that um, somebody somewhere tend to watch and there's a feedback, you know, we have special, um, you know, these people, their, their assistants and uh, people that read all these things and feedback to them. I know, I, I, I have that strong belief that they do, somebody do check our show and feedback to the leaders. 
I, I'm not trying to be, you know, but there's there are a few things that had happened that made me believe that something somewhere is happening. So we we are, we keep doing our part, the little that we can by doing going through these conversations and um, doing the analysis from what we can see. Um, so I want to appreciate you again, Mr. Wally Olaito, for always coming on and moderating the show. Um, and all our viewers, whether you're on or on, uh, you know, uh, watching on our Facebook page or on YouTube, uh, or you're watching right now, we just want to say thank you for joining us. We will be back again next Friday, same time, same place. You all have a lovely, lovely weekend, and may God bless you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Nigeria we want Nigeria. Great Nigeria Jump of Africa Nigeria we want Great Nigeria The Nigeria we want With Vicky Yomi Folaji Yeah, me show the moon Wale your light on I can see what you could The Nigeria we want Great Nigeria on big ocean, the Nigeria we want. Nigeria. Great Nigeria, Jump of Africa.